Ohio State at one, no arguments here. Um, I think they check uh, resume boxes in ways that a lot of other, uh, all the other undefe undefeated teams at the top, those five teams right there, Ohio State, Georgia, Michigan, Florida State, and Washington. Um, they also have a defensive excellence, right? Like I always try to tell people that the committee members, they get these team sheets and it's just flooded with information and it's yards per play, yards per play allowed, relative yards per play based on the rest, rest of the schedule. And it, and really what you want to look for is any outliers. You want to look for anything that is excellent and then anything that stands out just a little bit. And while Ohio State's offense to our eyes is not anywhere close to what we are used to with C.J. Stroud or previous iterations, Justin Fields, of the Ohio State offense, especially under Ryan Day, efficiency numbers overall on the season are not bad. Mm -hmm. And its defense is excellent. So whether it's the metrics for your performance, whether it's the metrics for your schedule, or simply the quality wins of Penn State and Notre Dame, plus throw in that at Wisconsin, which is pretty good. No arguments from me based on the committee's own criteria. Yeah, I this this is the same top four I put in the Monday after in my projection for the week. So this is what I thought was coming. And I think that what what I look for in the early rankings is, you know, because like the committee is rotating. It's different people. It's never mm -hmm. really the same groups. You, While they typically get force-fed the same metrics and stats every year, you never really know how the committee's going to vote or what they're looking for because people are different and their opinions of what bad are different. But I think what happened here and why I thought Ohio State would be number one is because at this point of the year, when you've got five undefeated 8-0 and o, Power 5 teams, the only thing that can you can really use to separate them, like you have game control, you have efficiency, you have all this stuff, but is resume. And it's an easy cop out. So that way, when everybody's like, why is Ohio State number one? You can just say, well, they have wins over Notre Dame and Penn State, who are two top, you know what, Notre Dame's at 15, Penn State's at 11. These are two top 15 wins. None, neither Georgia, Michigan, or Florida State or Washington have two top 15 wins. Ohio State does. So we've put them at number one. And everybody's just like, Oh, okay, fine. That's cool. That works. But it's, yeah, I, oh, I don't think Ohio State's the best team in the country. I don't think Ohio State's the best team in the Big Ten. But I do think that from that standpoint, it makes perfect sense. Now you look at Georgia and you could say they don't have any of those major wins, but they are also the two time defending champion. They have been dominating teams. Michigan, I posted the stat today on Twitter, the game control stat. How many snaps have you played or what percentage of your snaps are you playing with at least a 14%? Point lead Michigan has been ahead by 14 points on 61 percent of their snaps this year nobody else in the country is higher than 51 percent so like they've been dominant and then Florida State obviously has the big win over LSU they have been dominant since the second half against Clemson although the schedule hasn't been nearly as hard since then and Clemson really we're finding out isn't that good and then Washington is just they've been fooling around too much like they have the big win over Oregon. You could argue that of those top five teams, they have the best win of all of them. They do by the committee's own declaration of where Oregon sits in these rankings. But this is where I, I clearly, Danny Cannell joining the conversation as well. Tom just mentioned the committee is different year to year. So it is interesting to at least try to see, you know, what they're latching onto when you have Georgia and Michigan sitting at number two and number three, Georgia's best wins being Florida and Kentucky, a pair of five and three teams. Michigan's best win being Rutgers. Second best win being, thank God, Matt rules on a three-game winning streak to give Nebraska a record above 500. Those strength of schedules are not going to come out great, but the eye test for both those teams, especially for the Bulldogs this past weekend, are going to be better than the recent memory because outside of the Oregon win, everything since that for the Huskies has not met the eye test of a top five team. This looks to me, if we were to overreact to this first set of rankings based on the top five teams, all those undefeateds, that they are very much looking at uh, less on resume and more at what you look like on the field. Then why is Ohio State one? Ooh. You know, because like, I mean, have I, the two wins. That's right. So all. then, but that goes, but that goes back to the resume thing. Like that goes back to the resume. Then that would fall back on them because I think it is interesting. Uh, by the way, with a lousy internet, 
It's always good because I got bumped off HQ. They were like, your Skype froze. I was like, sorry, I got to go. So there, there are advantages <laughs> to having crappy Skype and crappy internet. I don't know what's happening. So hopefully I stay on here. I need a drink. Um, <laughs> so I, so like, I, I think if you pulled a hundred analysts, guys like us, pod, like college football junkies and said, who do you think is the best team in the country? I don't know how many people would say Ohio State. You know, and yet they're number one, which kind of like just makes me laugh out loud because that's the system we're in. And like, I get it. I think we all said we wouldn't be surprised if Ohio State was number one. But and because the win against Notre Dame is good. I wonder how, like, much like Florida State's win over Clemson, I wonder the Penn State win. It's going to rain because there's such a big drop off in the Big Ten. It's probably still going to hold weight. But I'll be very curious to see what Michigan does with Penn State. You I know? can name and at if, least three people who would have Ohio State at number one, by the way. The one, the AP voters? <laughs> yeah, Brett McMurphy, David yeah. Jablonski, and Matt Baker would all have Ohio State as the best team in the country, if you ask them. There you go. So hey, well, look, and I, I think that you know, we're we're going to keep doing this. The field's going to expand. It's why I have brought an NCAA tournament mindset to it. And in the NCAA tournament, there are one seeds that you don't believe are the best team that mm -hmm. Vegas doesn't even make as one of the four top teams to win the national title. But because they are applying that, you know, methodical process of how they stack these teams up against each other, they're going to go and get a one seed. And there might be a two seed or a three seed that you would think is better, that Vegas says is better based on power ratings or better chances to win the tournament. And so, yeah, Ohio State, flawed offensively for sure, but still elite defensively, and they've just got that extra win, right? Like Florida State is being killed right now, not by their own fault, but because Duke is falling apart with health and Clemson can't figure things out. If Duke and Clemson are in the top 25, Florida State's got a way, way, way better argument for number one. And I definitely think they're not sitting down there at number four. You know, if Florida uh, doesn't get crushed by Kentucky and is a six and two team coming off the cocktail party, then, you know, maybe Georgia has a better argument. I, I, I think that right now, saying Ohio State is number one checks out based on their process, if that makes sense. Did you guys think it was interesting? I, when I pulled up the email from the selection committee, I thought this was interesting. That they basically, with the Power Five level, they don't they have all the undefeateds, all the one loss, all the two loss. And that was interesting because the AP and my poll, like when I look at teams, we're at the point now where I don't think you have to hold the losses and, you know, in such high regard, like, and you have to stack them up the way the committee did. I just thought it was very interesting because, you know, that's, that's a rough go for the two lost teams like LSU and Notre Dame, both being significantly lower with Louisville, you know, those, the, the one loss teams in the back end to me are the big winners. 